Good afternoon, <clears throat> and welcome to St. George Church for the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The celebrant for today will be Father Paul, assisted by Deacon Greg. The Mass intentions for, de- for today are James and Danny McCarthy, Jose Reyes, Anita Hayes, and Joseph. <clears throat> Please join us Monday, July 4th at 9 a.m. for the Independence Day Mass, our regular scheduled 815 Mass, a.m. Mass, will not take place. The St. George chapter of the Archdiocese of Chicago Domestic Violence Outreach will resume our active status. Please join us to learn more about the rampart, rampant crisis of abuse in the home and to find out how you can help build awareness, connect victims with services, and promote prevention. We encourage men as well as women to participate this Wednesday evening, July 6th at 6.30 p.m. in the Cahill Center meeting room one. The rectory office will be closed on Monday for the 4th of July holiday. Please see the bulletin for additional details and other church announcements. Please silence all cell phones. We stand and greet one another in the Lord and offer friendly greeting to those around you. Our opening song is number 735, Rejoice the Lord is King, number 735. Rejoice the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph. St. George. We are here to thank God for all his many blessings and in a particular way this weekend of course we thank God for the blessing of our country. We ask that God will continue to watch over and bless us as a nation. And so we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. At the end of Mass, as with every end of Mass, the deacon, Deacon Greg, is going to dismiss us. He's going to tell us basically, you've done your thing here, now go out. And that's what we hear in the Gospel today when Jesus sends out 72 disciples to let people know that he is on the way, that he is coming. It's for us now to tell people that God is, that Jesus is on his way and he is coming again. So we ask that the Lord will bless us so that we may stay that course and forgive us for the times when we veered away. Lord Jesus, you willingly embraced the cross, bringing salvation to all God's people. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you send laborers to announce the good news of the kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to proclaim that your kingdom is at hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the humiliation of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exult, exult with her, all you who are mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts, for thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord.
second reading, <clears throat> a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy be to all who follow this rule and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. says the Lord, you who are my disciples, I make known to you all I've learned from my Father. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan falling like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, I do hope that this will be a wonderful 4th of July for you and for your families. I hope you'll be able to have uh, some wonderful times together with people who you love and a safe time as well. So please do be careful. This past week, I was at a convocation for the priests of the archdiocese. All the priests of Chicago are urged to attend. It's intended to be a time for us to reflect and share and reconnect with each other. As you can imagine, sometimes the priests in one part of the archdiocese don't get to know or see priests from the other. In fact, I can't even count the number of times I was asked, now, where is Tinley Park? <laughs> Over the course of time, many stories were shared about our experiences, our mentor priests, and our people. One of the common themes priests brought up was how unprepared we felt going from the seminary into a parish. I remember clearly one seminary prof telling us, you can't learn how to be a priest from a book. Most of it is on the job training. As intimidating as it was for us, I can't imagine how tiresome it must be for the people of God when they, enter yet, when they encounter yet another newly minted know-it-all priest. Your patience is most appreciated. Eventually we figure it out and we know how patient you have been with us. I think about that sense of being unprepared after 12 years of seminary. I'm among the last of a breed that actually went through seminary, high school, college, and then major seminary at Mundelein. Now, most priests today uh, have about six or seven years of preparation. And still, we often don't feel ready. I want you to think about that compared to all the training and the seminars and the preparation many of you went through to become parents. Remember all that time you spend in classrooms learning how to be a parent? Probably about this much. It is clear evidence that there is a God, that children live to see maturity, and parents don't lose their minds. You are a blessed bunch. So in view of that, it is interesting to think about the 72 Jesus is sending out before him. Their job is to prepare the little towns and villages that Jesus is about to visit. He gives them only a few items, prayer, a message, and trust. The message is clear. The message is this. The kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is coming to your town, so be ready to welcome him. And what does that mean for us? Jesus has come to us. He has made his home with us, and it still seems like the kingdom of chaos is reigning. We as followers of Jesus are always living in joyful hope in anticipation of the coming of God's kingdom, even as we know it is, in some ways, already among us. Our existence may be in a troubled world, but our heart is always in that place where Jesus dwells. For us, the kingdom of God is here and yet to come all at the same time. Maybe a way of thinking about that is when you're going on a trip. You're in a car driving to the airport, but already your thoughts and plans are all about your destination. In a way, you're already there, at least in your head. We can kind of say we're already in the kingdom of God, for us here, even as we have to navigate through spiritual traffic jams and detours. But Jesus gives us a message to convey and that the message is, is that Jesus is coming again to the world as we know it. Jesus also gives us a prayer, a prayer for more servants to bring in the harvest. It is Jesus' de deepest hope that all of creation would be united in him. Now, he has done his part. Now, we have to respond with faithful and hopeful hearts. And if that is truly the kind of person we are, then we can't help but share the joy of our labor. And more laborers come into the field of a hopeful harvest of love. We usually think of these laborers as priests or sisters or deacons, but by our baptism, each and every one of us is called to be a servant who creates more servants 
more laborers through our love and our example. Now, ordinarily, when a person is given a job to do, they're given all the right tools to do it, right? Otherwise, they may be set up for failure. Jesus doesn't do what we might expect. He gives them the message of the kingdom, and then he says, now, trust. Trust that someone will feed you, take you into their home, and accept your message. And if they don't accept your message, just leave. Keep moving, because there are others who need to hear this message. I think that's kind of stunning, but there's a clear wisdom in leaving behind all your baggage of self-reliance and instead trust that God will use good people to help us along the way. And what does Jesus say about failure? What about those times when we feel like we have tried to convey the message and we have failed? How many people do you know, maybe in your own personal life, who don't come to church, who don't practice the faith, and you want to try to reach out, you want to try to touch them, and it just doesn't penetrate. And sometimes we can feel like we failed. Well, today evangelization is the hot word in the church, and with good reason. It is the Christian's job, number one, to spread the good news of the gospel in whatever way we can. That doesn't mean standing on a street corner with a microphone. It just means taking the opportunities when they come, living our lives with conviction, and being patient with those who just don't get it. Sometimes we know it works. Sometimes we know it fails. In the end, Jesus isn't waiting with a ledger report. When the 72 returned, they were ecstatic on their success. And Jesus says, that's all good, but even better, no, your names are written in heaven. Even if we find ourselves feeling unprepared, Jesus gives us the gifts of prayer, of trust, and a message. If we walk forward in life with these tools, we are bound to build something beautiful because they all come from the grace of God. If we walk forward in life with all these tools, we will see our names written in heaven. And that is what it's all about. We stand together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus looks to us to be messengers of his good news, messengers of hope to a waiting world. And so we turn now to him with hope in our hearts that he will hear our prayers. For the church, that she may ever more perfectly display the truth of God's love and the gospel of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord 
Lord, hear our prayer. For our nations, that the Lord will bless this land of the free as we celebrate Independence Day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the men and women in our military at home and in abroad, and for all the, those in public safety personnel who serve our nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the grace this week to honor Christ in our homes and in every aspect of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by poverty, hardship, oppression, and persecution, that God will rescue them and, li and lift them up. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, may they be granted the eternal rest for which they long. And we remember Rebecca Kelly, June Brooch, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of infinite love, we give you thanks for all the blessings that we have received. We thank you in a particular way this weekend for our country. We ask you, Lord, to bless all of us together. Give us hearts that are compassionate. Give us hearts that are true. Help us, Lord, to be generous in our abundance. We ask you, Lord, in a particular way to bless those who protect us, our firefighters, our police officers, our medical professionals, our military personnel. Keep them safe in your care, Lord. Help us, Lord, to truly be one nation under God. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation song is number 394. Here I am, Lord, number 394. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. O Lord, may this oblation dedicated to your name purify us and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory, whose without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by this same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. George, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, lays our bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 
brought together in God's grace and inspired by the Holy Spirit, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of our world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite the folks at home who are watching now to take a moment to make an act of spiritual communion, and I ask that those who are in the parking lot to please turn on your flashers so our ministers can find you more easily. Our communion song is number 349, The Supper of the Lord, number 349. If we have one more Eucharistic minister, we could use one more set of hands.
O Lord, grant that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Do we have anyone who's celebrating a wedding anniversary in the month of July? Any July weddings? Of, please stand up. Please stand up. How many years? 56. All right. Congratulations. Folks, 55. We're catching up on you. 55. 55. All right. Terrific. 46. 51. Fantastic. Clearly, people back in those days didn't have the sense to wait till it was cooler, you know, to have their wedding. But I want to congratulate. So let, let, let's uh, extend our hands in blessing, please, for all these folks. Gracious and loving God, it is in the family that we find the beginnings of our faith. It is in the love between two people that we see the example of Christ's love for his church. So we ask you, Lord, that you would bless these couples. Bless them, Lord, with happiness, health, and joy. May they come to appreciate each other more each day, and may they see the face of God in each other's eyes. And I ask you, Lord, to send down your blessings, those of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, folks. <laughs> what a great example for all of us. Wow. Many, many years of, of dedication and love and sacrifice, too, huh? Uh, often at weddings, I'll tell people, you know, um, sometimes you'll hear people say these romantic things, you know, as they're about to get married, you know, I, I, I would give up my life for you. I would give up my life, right? And you hope that you would, right? But I tell them really practically, more often is, it's like, I'll put up with you. <laughs> if you can put up with each other for all those years, please write the book. <laughs> Let's stand together and pray for God's continued blessings. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to proclaim the gospel by your life. Amen. Thanks be Amen. to God. Have a great fourth, everyone. Be safe. You have a lot of burgers. <laughs> Our closing song is number 582. Mine eyes have seen the glory, number 582. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Watchfires of a hundred circling caps, they have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of all before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Right.
Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make us holy, let us die that all be free while God is marching.